Sorry, everyone, for a bit of a delay. As it turns out, uh, technical difficulties, a conference full of hackers, can't get something up on a, on a projector. Uh, that's how you have it. So um, there is a bit of a hiccup out here. Um, you know, the laptop on which all of the radio and digital signal processing software is installed, for some reason, it will just not play ball with the projector. <laughs> So I've got another laptop. Um, we can go through the presentation, but for the practicals, you know, we I would encourage then everyone to come forward and, you know, um, this is a hands-on workshop. Um, the idea is to get everybody introduced to digital signal processing and understanding how to process radio waves in the software realm. So, um, you know, when we get to that part, I'm just going to request everyone to come forward and take a look. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Um, short introduction to myself. Um, basically, I'm a programmer, a hacker, and um, by virtue of those two, an entrepreneur as well. Uh, my experience mostly lies in operational technology. Um, I work a lot on, with the power grid, so you know, securing, pen testing, power plants, uh, transmission, distribution, a lot of maritime as well. Extensive experience on the enterprise side. Um, I've been doing this for uh, a while now. Um, let us, um, yeah, so um, renewable energy, um, ships, um, hydroelectric plants, thermal plants, um, all, all that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, that's, that's what brings me to talk about radios because a lot of the, the sort of infrastructures that I work with, uh, wireless is a huge component. You know, there are control signals for OT that are being transmitted over wireless technologies, often not very well secured. And in order to test the security of these signals, um, software-defined radio is invaluable. So what is this talk about? You know, what are we going to do? I'm going to talk a little bit about the very basics, you know, the physics of waves, what's an electromagnetic wave, basic properties of it, amplitude, frequency, phase. You guys would have covered this probably in, you know, fifth or sixth grade physics, but it's always good to go over it, especially when we start to get hands-on, you know. Um, I'm going to talk about modulation schemes. How is data um, sort of carried by these waves? How do we put data into waves? So different types of modulations. A lot of you will be familiar with um, amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, phase shift keying, and um, modern systems of modulation such as OFDM, which uh, is basically powering pretty much LTE, 5G, and everything around us. Um, we're going to talk about tools, which is the hardware and software that um, are used to explore these signals, to um, generate these signals. And of course, some live examples. And um, this is something we can all participate in. Uh, I see a lot of you with your laptops open, so that's awesome. Uh, we've got a, a booth, uh, a radio hacking booth, just at the end of this corridor. So you know, after this workshop, feel free to drop in and hack out with us. We've got a capture the signal tournament running. And we're streaming RF over TCP IP. So you don't need any specialized hardware. You can just come in there, connect to our Wi-Fi network, and play. Um, more about the CTS a bit later. So <clears throat> I'm going to assume that everybody here is new to software-defined radio and digital signal processing. Uh, anybody out here with experience in this domain? Software-defined radio? None at all? Wireless? Any Wi-Fi hackers? I know there's one. Um, we're running the radio village together. Any Anyone else familiar with Wi-Fi hacking? Come on, packet injection. No one? Okay, cool. So my assumptions are right. Uh, well, let's start out with the basics. Um, just a pointer, SDR in Singapore, you know, I was doing some research before bringing in all my hardware because I don't want to land up in the airport and go straight to jail, right? <laughs> so I did a bit of homework on whether this stuff is legal out here. And it turns out uh, that's the Minister of Defense, and um, Singapore's using SDRs a lot for battlefield awareness, you know, building their own mesh networks and, um, you know, creating advanced situational awareness in warfare. So it, it, it's huge, you know, that as civilians we have access to technology which is at par with uh, military in a legal way. So... Right. 
let's get back to the basics. What are we doing out here? What, what, what is RF transmission about? So basically, we're trying to send some information from one place to another without wires, right? And how do we do that? We have something called a carrier wave. Why is it a carrier? Because it carries some information from point A to B. That's called the carrier signal. Now, the carrier signal by itself is not of much good. It needs to have some sort of information in it. So how does that happen? We sort of modulate that carrier wave in such a way that we encapsulate some information within it. And that information is called, um, well, the baseband signal. And then you have the carrier signal. So the information comes in, and it modulates the carrier wave, and it goes out there. Um, one of the most simplest forms of modulation is OOK, or on-off keying. Basically, the presence of a signal indicates, um, well, that it's on, and the absence indicates that it's off. And the, the most simple form of on-off keying is anyone? Yeah. Can anyone read that? Come on. Syncon. Yeah, absolutely. Not bad. Who said that? You said it. You said it. OK, you guys can read Morse code straight off, or did you just read the number of characters? And uh, Yeah? All right. Hackers in the house figuring stuff out. Uh, awesome. That's, that's pretty cool. So um, yeah, at, at, the, at the easy end of things, you've got on-off keying, where a signal on is a 1, a signal off is a 0. And you can you know send binary strings across in that way. And at the high end of things, you've got OFDM, which is the orthogonal frequency, um, uh, where you know all the modern all the modern standards use it. It's where you know different sort of carrier signals are very closely interlinked without any spacing between the signals. And that's why you know we saw that huge jump in bandwidth. Do you remember the days where we had GSM and 2G, and we we'd take like years to just open a website, and now we're watching 4K on our mobile phones. Anyone wonder what the hell happened? <laughs> you know, how, how did this happen? So OFDM is basically responsible for it, where we can, with the same amount of uh, bandwidth in a signal, we can transmit you know, exponential amounts of information. So um, the ability to, l to explore all of these um, sort of encoding schemes and waves, it's, it's all there with software-defined radio and open source software. Um, <coughs> a simple example. We've got a carrier wave right on top. Um, ignore the equations if you don't want to uh, you know, delve into the mathematics of it. But if maths is your thing, then by all means, indulge yourself. Um, so the, 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 the top one is the carrier signal, which carries the message. The second one is the baseband signal, which is essentially the message. And um, amplitude modulation is basically you know, shaping that carrier signal according to the message. And you can pretty clearly see how the amplitude changes um, with the message. So that's amplitude modulation. Very simple. Below that is FM, or frequency modulation. And you can see where the carrier, sorry, where the baseband or the message goes up. The frequency increases. You know, These waves come together. And where it goes down, they're spaced apart. And that's how frequency modulation works. Um, there's a third type, a third property of a wave, which is phase modulation. Sort of works in a similar way. Um, so traditionally, if we had to build an AM circuit, it would look something like this. You'd need a bunch of electronics components, and the modulation would be done in hardware or electronic circuits. But what we're going to be talking about today is doing all of this in software. Now. Enter software defined radios. Yeah? So, whereas in, in the olden days you'd have inflexible hardware to do this uh, modulation and demodulation, nowadays you've got flexible software to do this. Uh, this is a flow graph in GNU radio. And um, for those of you playing the CTF, take note of it. This might actually help you solve some of the flags. Um, what we can see is simply the source, which is the information, is modulating a signal, which is the carrier, right? And what is the mathematical function? It is simply a multiply. And if you go back to the previous slide, it sort of makes sense. 
if you do a mathematical multiplication between the first and the second, you sort of get this. So it's as simple as that in the digital domain. You do uh, mathematics. Typically, it happens in complex numbers. Does anyone out here um, know what complex numbers are? Any idea? Everyone's just blinking at me. <laughs> Does anyone know what complex numbers are? Blink, blink, blink. <laughs> OK, cool. Um, yeah, I was like this when I started out with, uh, you know, playing with HackRF. I was like, yeah, I'm going to hack radio waves and stuff. And then I realized there's a whole lot of, there's a wall of mathematics between me and hacking radio waves. But it's, it's pretty easy. You're going to get past it. Yeah, that's what uh, the radio hacking village is for, to make things simple and to sort of gamify this entire experience for you. Um, so basics, how do you get an analog signal into the digital realm? Anyone? Anyone hear of sampling? Yeah? Where have you heard of sampling? Yeah, yeah, come on, speak up. You guys have heard of sampling, of course. Audio? Yeah? You, your sound cards, 44.1 kilohertz, CD audio, 48 kilohertz. What's happening there? When you, um, when you talk into a microphone, suppose you're trying to record yourself on a computer, this is an acoustic wave. It's hitting the microphone transducer. It's being converted into a continuous signal of electric current. And how is that being digitized? The sound card on your computer is looking at that electronic signal. And 48,000 times in a second, it is just taking a reading of that entire signal. And when I say a reading, it is taking the amplitude, the frequency, the phase, all of this uh, in the digital realm. And that's basically, that's sampling. It's reducing a continuous time signal to a discrete quantized signal. And that's what your SDR hardware is doing, all right? That's all the hardware is doing. When we say software-defined radio, it's actually more software. It's not the hardware. So the hardware is taking these radio waves, which are flowing through the air, and it is um, quantizing it. So you can see that. Now, it's very important that you choose the right sampling rate. If your sampling rate is um, not enough, if you just have, say, one, two, three, four, five points, your line can go anywhere. So if you want to accurately represent the real information, your sampling need rate needs to be at least twice the frequency of the wave of your carrier wave. So these are some things we'll cover in the workshop, but just want to get you familiarized with it. Now, complex numbers, why? The mathematics of um, handling digital signal processing is a lot more simple in the complex plane. All right, When we look at a wave, we look at a rotating phenomenon in the complex plane. So what appears to be something like this in the time versus amplitude domain, in the complex plane, it's just circles that are rotating. And the mathematics of it becomes easier. So it's computationally cheaper to do this with complex numbers, and hence complex numbers are used um, for digital signal processing. Um, right, let's get down to it. So what are the tools? You know, we're going to talk about some hardware and some software. So like I said, the hardware is basically just to convert these analog signals into the digital realm. And um, examples of the hard hardware are like this little guy here. The Hack RF is what I've got. It is a half duplex SDR, which means it can either transmit or receive. It can't do both at the same time. There are, there are limitations to that. Certain protocols uh, require you to transmit and receive at the same time. Um, but for the purposes of the workshop and for learning and prototyping, it's more than enough. RTL SDR, it's the cheapest. It's, it's the lowest end of it. It's this little dongle you get for about 20 to $30. And you can capture pretty much any frequency. You can't transmit, but you can receive anything. And these are all the popular um, you know, hardware components for software-defined radio. We're going to be using open source software. So GNU Radio Companion is going to be our best friend. I'm going to walk you through a few examples using this particular piece of software. Python. So GNU Radio Companion is basically just like a front end for Python. What it does is it. You, you draw that flow graph, you know, stuff like I showed you in the previous slide. And at the back end, Python code gets generated and executed. So if you're comfy and you're a good programmer, you can just go in there and write the code yourself. 
um, GQRX in Spectrum, and you know, if you're good with it, you can write your own tools. So this is what the hardware looks like. Um, I've got this. You know, there's much more expensive hardware, all the way up to thirty to forty thousand dollars for you know um, multi-channel full duplex hardware, and that's the kind of stuff you saw on the first slide that the military was using. Um, it's available off the shelf. You know, you can order it; it'll reach you within a month. Um, be careful using it. You know, don't just go ahead and transmit on restricted on restricted frequencies and stuff. So, what's the difference in all of these pieces of hardware? Uh, basically, it's the frequency range. You know, like this hack RF, it can go up to six gigahertz, and it can go low down into you know uh, maybe I think uh, 30 megahertz, if I'm not mistaken, 30 megahertz to six gigahertz. The more expensive stuff has a wider range, and uh, so that's the frequency range. Uh, we already spoke about full duplex, half duplex. Some of them have multiple channels. They'll have two transmit and two receive channels. So you can then you know pen test stuff like 5G radio signals and can do a lot of cool stuff. Um, software, uh, GQRX, GNU Radio. I'm going to show you practical examples of this and what parts of the spectrum look like. We're going to look at the 2G spectrum, the 3G spectrum right now. We're going to look at uh, the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and uh, the gentleman in that corner who has a big um, jammer. Have you seen the guy in the drone campung? He's, he, he's got... Yeah, he's got a <laughs> he's got a Yagi Uda antenna connected to a, a jammer, and that just jams the entire 2.4 gigahertz range. Pretty pretty interesting stuff. Illegal, but interesting. <laughs> All right, so you know, time for some practical stuff now. We're going to get our hands dirty, um, our paws dirty, and I may ask you to come up um, out here. But before that, let me just conclude with the presentation, because once I ask everyone to come up or you know, around the table, I can bring it to any one of the central tables. Um, I won't be coming back here. And this is because the display was not working on that laptop. So w what are the advantages of uh, learning this, I would say, art of software-defined radio? Well, you can reverse engineer and test the security of pretty much all the layers of wireless communication. So. You know, you guys who are familiar with uh, Wi-Fi pen testing, you've used those adapters which are capable of monitor mode. So when you have that kind of hardware, what you can do is essentially test layer two, the data frame, all of the properties of the data frame and the layers above it. The link layer itself remains out of your reach because the demodulation is happening in hardware. When you have software-defined radio, you can do that yourself. So you can test pretty much every layer um, of, of the stack, of your communication stack. Um, you can interact with or read exploit pretty much everything. You know, um, Wireless signals are flowing through the air all around us. They are being received by different circuits. The data is flowing through embedded systems. Who knows? You know, you change a few bits here and there, you could trigger a device to do something it was not intended to do. Um, in short, it enables you to test the security of pretty much uh, any sort of wireless system. Um, the image on the right is pretty interesting. It's a cool story. Um, by the, it's, it's, it's by one of my SDR heroes. His name is Balint Siebel. Currently works for Apple in their satellite program. Um, what he did is he plugged his software-defined radio into a a large radio telescope and uh, essentially brought to life a spacecraft that was abandoned 36 years ago. It was orbiting somewhere between you know, Venus and the sun. And yeah, a, a device pretty much like that, you take the output, you know, amplify it, stick it to a pretty powerful antenna. And you can do stuff like that, fire thrusters on spacecrafts. And you know, um, who knows what else? Who knows what else? So obviously, this was done with the permission of NASA. He just didn't go and you know fire up a spacecraft out of the blue. So don't don't get ideas. I know there are too many hackers in the room. Um, you can look at uh, you know ADSB signals. These are just examples. So all aircrafts, you know, they have this sort of passive uh, monitoring where they keep spewing out these packets over radio, reporting their position, heading. Um, Ships do something similar. It's called AIS. Uh, there's, a, there's a ton of stuff going on in the radio spectrum that most of us are not aware of. And once we start exploring it, 
gets very, very interesting indeed. There's the whole ham radio scene as well. You know, if you're interested to communicate with people thousands of miles away on the other side of the earth, you can, you know, with the right antennas. And of course, you need a license. Once you're licensed, you can operate on the ham frequencies. So a lot of cool stuff you can do with SDR. You can download data directly from weather satellites. All of this is legal. You just, you know, tune into the right frequency, write some Python, and um, you've got it. So. Um, the CTS challenge out there is something that I would encourage all of you to come in and play. All right, it's very beginner friendly and, you know, we are there to help you out. And it's the only way you can understand this by learning it the hard way, getting your hands dirty, trying, failing, trying again, failing, and eventually you'll figure it out. Uh, those of you who are smart programmers and hackers, you might just figure it out. There may be some of you out here who are better than us, so in that case, you know, Please teach us, and you know we're ready to to learn. Um, we're going to be using common technologies, you know, FM, RDS, NTSC. These are things that we use in our day-to-day -day lives, but we don't really understand how these signals work. So the the flags are hidden in these signals. Um, it's not necessarily difficult to solve. You can solve it by writing a demodulator yourself. Or alternatively, you could just bring a device like an FM radio nearby the, the antenna and, you know, get the flag out. Who knows? There's a lot of interesting stuff in there. Um, there are some softwares that you would require, and I had requested everyone on the Discord channel to get a bootable Pen2. Pen2 is a distribution of Linux that is preloaded with, um, you know, the drivers and tools that are necessary for uh, exploring the wireless realm. Um, no specialized hardware is required. We're streaming everything over Wi-Fi and TCP, so super inclusive. Um, yeah, these are the different challenges. I won't, go to I won't go into them too much now because they're quite dependent on what we do in the practical. Um, we've got some interesting stuff. Um, who's heard of a radio replay attack? Anyone? No? Absolutely. It's, it's exactly that. It's just uh, sniffing a signal out of the air. Typically, like you said, it's a car key. And the way to do that with a car key is that you need to jam and sniff at the same time. Because um, most key fobs for cars, they have a rotating key so that you can't do a simple replay attack. So when you do this, when the person goes to open their car, you jam his device so that the signal doesn't reach the car. At the same time, you take a copy of you know whatever he's transmitted. And you don't even need to decode it. You don't need to do anything. You can just save it as a WAV file, a raw, you know, raw capture file, and then just rebroadcast it, and the car opens. So We've got an interesting way of learning um, replay attacks. Uh, this is something pulled out of DEF CON. You know, the little collars that we use to train pets deliver a small electric shock when you press a button on a remote. So yeah, it's, it's called the duel. Two people sitting on a table opposite each other, blank terminals, wearing a shock collar. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to reverse engineer the signal, and the first person to shock the other person wins. So, I mean, yeah, there's no better way to learn than under pressure. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, I, I've electrocuted myself all weekend trying to figure this challenge out. <laughs> so, you know, please come in there, play with us, uh, be safe. There are five levels of, uh, you know, shock you can deliver. Um, it's all on-off keying, so, you know, make sure you get those ones and zeros right or someone, someone could get hurt. <laughs> um, some, some cool resources that I want to show you guys. Uh, there's the SIG ID wiki and web SDR. So I'm going to just uh, go to the SIG ID wiki. So this is a signal identification Wikipedia. And what that is is when you have your SDR running and you look at a signal's pattern, you can't identify it easily. So this is basically like an index, a directory of all the categories of signals that are there. And you can, you know, visually sort of identify your signal and begin to reverse engineer or decode it. Um, 
And then there is Web SDR, which is a very interesting project. It's basically a network of SDRs all around the world that are connected to the internet and that are listening on these frequencies. And you can tune into them over IP and uh, you know start to manipulate radio waves in different parts of the world. And if you so feel benevolent, you may connect your own SDR to this network and open it up to other people on the internet. Of course, put restrictions on the transmission, right? Because it's, it's illegal to transmit on certain frequencies. But um, yeah. Uh, so some QR codes in case you guys want to take pictures or uh, you know reference this stuff for later. Some housekeeping before we get into the practicals, OK? Um, some do's and don'ts when playing the CTS. Respect others. Um, basically, you know, don't do stuff like jamming the airwaves. Okay, don't deny service to anyone. The CTF infrastructure is open. It is not secured. It's for, for all of us to play and have fun. So, uh, you know, don't take it out. Don't try to hack the, the CTF server. Um, do not transmit on licensed or restricted frequencies. That's really important. There are certain frequencies out here that are unlicensed, like your 433 megahertz, your you know 866 megahertz. All that is fine. Um, it's absolutely illegal to transmit on on licensed frequencies. Um, any others? If you're unsure, please ask. You can uh, ask anyone in a green T-shirt, or you can ask me if you've got your own SDR and you're unsure of what to do. Um, and above all, have fun and learn. Here's the spectrum allocation in Singapore. This is the latest copy from the government uh, website. You can you know, just scan that QR code if you have any doubt. Um, you know, Check out what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do. And also, when you start exploring the spectrum, you can easily identify uh, which, band, which bands have what sort of data on it. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting to see what's, what's going on in the airwaves. Um, finally, remember. Uh, we are not lawyers, so when I tell you don't transmit on a frequency and you can transmit on this one, it's just advice. What you do is entirely uh, your responsibility. Um, there is a, s a separate network called the RHK network, which you will all see on your phone. The password is pasted up on the wall. Everything on that network is within scope, so you know if, if you're new to this and you, you've not played CTFs alongside other hackers, Perhaps don't bring your work laptop onto this network. You know, if, you're, if you've been pen testing other companies and you have your client's data on it and you're not sure of what you're doing, I would say maybe spawn a VM and get on the network. You know, uh, just take some basic uh, hygiene steps. Um, you could be playing alongside hackers who are significantly more advanced than you and you never know. So just, uh, you know, keep that isolation there. Um, yeah, please have fun. That's that's it. I think that's all. Thank you. And now for the practical part, since um, you know I can't connect my main laptop to the screen, I would encourage everyone to come forward. Which table should I use? Um, should I should I sit on a table where there are more people? That makes sense, right? Yeah. Which which table should I use? The center one. Yeah, out there. Okay, cool. Let me try one last time sticking this HDMI cable in. And let's cross our fingers. Uh, it's not going to work. Yep, it's not working. Okay, I'm coming there. I don't think I need the mic anymore, right? All right. Pulling up GQRX out here. And what, what this allows us to do is just, you know, look at the spectrum. And we're looking at you know 20 megahertz of the spec of a spectrum at the time. This is the FM band. So these are all of the radio stations within Singapore. We're not demodulating anything at the moment, but I think we could. If if you guys want to hear something, let's. Yeah, Savage Garden. It's never bad, right? Let's record this as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We got a bit of that. So the, the cool part is right now, uh, we're simultaneously processing 20 megahertz of bandwidth. So that's all of these FM stations at the same time. 
And uh, you know, if we so wanted, we could play all of them simultaneously at the same time. So these are your air traffic control frequencies, ground control. I'm not going to play them because I believe it's uh, illegal for others to listen to it, but we can definitely look at the patterns. That's not illegal. Um, let us look at somewhere around 950 megahertz, which is your, you know, 3G. Um, this is the kind of stuff that's, you know, running all your mobiles at the moment. You can see how heavily it's painted. You can see the density of uh, the data. And the thing is, by looking at these patterns, you, you should be able to discern what sort of encoding scheme it is. And how do you do that? You just refer back to that SIG ID wiki that you know I had put up earlier. So I want to look at something that we're all familiar with. We can look at the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. This is uh, pretty much like our Wi-Fi, you know, Zigbee, Bluetooth, uh, all of that operates around here. And you can see it's pretty busy. There's a lot of Wi-Fi stuff going on. There's the drone guy outside who's, <laughs> who's been abusing this portion of the spectrum. Um, and there's some pretty interesting stuff that I found out here. You know, even at, uh, say, 500 megahertz, you find some signals which are just coming on and off in the middle. All of these mean something, OK? So um, yeah. We saw how to demodulate FM using this, but uh, what I want to show you guys is how to do it, you know, using uh, GNU radio. So I'm going to close this, and I am going to open uh, a GNU radio flow graph. Um, so this is a this is what it takes to receive um, FM. So what am I doing? I'm starting out with a signal from my hack RF device. Okay, this is a source, and there's a sync. If, if any of you guys in software security know that data always enters a program through a source, and it lands up at a sync. So we've set it up as a source to get data from here, and I'm taking data in at something called SAMP rate, which is the samples per second. I'm taking 10 million samples per second, 10 megahertz of bandwidth. That's a lot. Okay, to, to capture FM, you only need 200 kilohertz. So um, how do we do that? We're going to sort of decimate this signal. Now, decimation is a process of downsampling or reducing your sample rate. And we're going to filter out you know, just the portion that we need. So <clears throat> I'm going to put this graph up for all of you to download. Um, so we don't necessarily need to go through all the parameters now. But long story short, I want to listen to 98.7 FM. I kind of liked it. Um, so we start out with a center frequency of 100 megahertz. There's something called a DC offset on these devices. It cr creates a huge spike. So if I want to listen to 98.7, I create another signal source uh, where the center frequency is sort of, um, <clears throat> it's, it's a difference between 100 megahertz and 98.7. So that's 1.3 megahertz. Multiply the two, put it through a low pass filter to get it down to just the 200 kilohertz of FM. And <clears throat> then we need an FM demodulator and send it to my audio sync. So, yeah, that's what it takes to listen to FM. But now you want to see something super cool? Uh, yeah, I didn't intend for that to play for so long. Okay. <laughs> So you want to see something pretty cool? Now what I can do is I can take this uh, signal and I can send it, instead of um, demodulating it right here, I can send it to something called 0MQ, ZMQ. So it's, it's like a messaging queue if you know Kafka or RabbitMQ or any of your other PubSub sort of infrastructures. I'm going to send all of these raw samples over messaging queue to um, port 8000. And um, let's see, I'm connected to um, the radio hacking network. And my IP address is uh, 14.251, so 10.200.14.251. So once I start this graph, any of you can actually just connect to 10.100.14.251 on port 8000. And I'm going to draw the remaining part of that flow graph where I actually um, 
have the source out here. So the source is now a messaging queue source. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and complete the remaining part of my flow graph by taking the messaging queue source and plugging it straight into my FMD modulator. So you all can do this as well. You can just stream the samples over TCP and run it and listen to FM. So what I could do is now stream the entire 20 megahertz of bandwidth, and each one of you could receive that 20 megahertz bit, decimate it and filter it yourselves, and each one of you could listen to a different radio station. So uh, this is the power of SDR. You can actually grab very large portions of the spectrum and you know process it later. And uh, what, what, what that means is, you know, even for stuff like signals, intelligence, and military, what they typically do is they just grab the whole spectrum for years and save it until encryption breaks. You know, someone pokes a hole in AES and they're like, "Ooh, you've suddenly got 20 years of you know secret communications decrypted." So it, it that that's why people are searching for quantum proof encryption and stuff nowadays. But anyway, SDR gives you the the ability to sort of uh, you know play around with all of this and 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 pull stuff out of the air and test the security. And yeah, I've just shown you a very basic example of FM, but uh, pretty much everything out there is up for grabs. So head over to the Radio Hacking Village. You know, we'll we'll set you up with the CTS. It starts out with really really simple stuff. You know, we're doing some spectrum painting and all. You might have seen it on the big TV out there. Um, um, yeah, just come in, enjoy, have a good time, be safe, don't do anything illegal. <laughs> yeah. Any any questions? Any questions, comments, any anything at all? Wow, that's scary. <laughs> it, either, it either means you've understood everything and you know it all better than me, uh, and or it means you've understood nothing, both of which are <laughs> not good. <laughs> Since we're past time, I'm going to conclude out here. Thank you all very much. If you have any questions, please head over to the Radio Hacking Village, and uh, we'll take them there. Thank you. <laughs>